Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Dana Schmidt Johnson. I'm the community manager of the Ritual Society. You know, the Ritual Society really began as an extension of Ritual Planner, which brought together people to pull tarot cards, discuss spreads, and so much more that's just grown and grown over time. And so I am so excited to introduce our new monthly tarot teacher, Erin Jones, to the community. Welcome, Erin. Thank you so much. It's such a delight to be here. And in this role, I'm really excited to get started. Yeah, we are so thrilled to have you as an amazing resource in our community. You know, what kind of classes can we expect from you over the coming months? Yeah, so um, I have a lot of ideas. I feel like for me, it's best to kind of move with the seasons, see what comes up around kind of happenings in the world, what we're sort of called to. Um, a few ideas that I've come up with while kind of brainstorming this new role in the society are affirmation crafting with the tarot. So this is kind of a intention setting class, something where we pull cards together and then design or write or craft our own affirmations, spells, things we can work with alongside the tarot. So this, this is almost kind of a deeper dive into a specific card and how that can relate to us as we move through the world. Um, another topic I have is just discussing kind of reading tarot in modern times. I feel like there's a lot of history, which we'll kind of touch on, and then how that's kind of come into the modern world, both by way of modernizing the deck designs themselves, uh, different guidebooks, different uses for the tarot that might be more modern than they were in the past. So that's another one. And then another would be kind of a sharing of how to trust yourself and ease your reliance on guidebooks. So I feel like that would be a great topic and something that I think a lot of folks kind of are challenged by when they're coming into learning how to trust reading the tarot without the crutch of that guidebook. I always just like to let people know that the guidebook is also created through a human lens and we all have that ability to kind of create our own meanings. So while they can be lovely and I will also share a list of sort of my favorite resources personally and you know they just kind of vary from creators and decks guidebooks to also just more books that are on the market that have a little wider range than just a one deck perspective. So those are a few of the class topics. And I also look forward to doing some meetups where we maybe just do a heavy Q&A. People can ask questions beforehand. We can get into answering some of those questions that might pop up in the society over time and do sort of a live uh, check-in around things that are kind of most top of mind for people. I think that will also probably bring some more topics up to the table too. Definitely. There is no shortage of tarot questions that we have on a daily basis, especially with our daily tarot spreads in our community. You know, people are always, hey, what could this mean? What in what advice could I get out of this? I don't quite understand this card, those kinds of questions. So I know we'll be getting a lot of those coming your way. But what else do you hope that our community will take away from um, having you uh, here on a regular basis? I mean, I feel like my role will be in bloom, right? Something that feels like it is in flow with the seasons, with what people are most kind of attracted to at the time. I also feel like an important role that a teacher plays, at least in my life, is someone who really provides encouragement around trusting your own knowing. So offering some resources, answering some questions, but also really reflecting back that you also probably already know the answer to many questions and just kind of how to access that, maybe building some intuitive muscle memory 
Uh, I also love the idea of sort of, like you said, uh, trusting what it might be like to read for ourselves versus others. Some of those kind of resources I think are really important. People, you know, really kind of sometimes need that encouragement around, hey, you, I think you know more than you think you know. <laughs> yeah, and it seems like while that comes a lot with beginners, I do find that even like really experienced tarot readers can, can, can kind of lose that compass for themselves from time to time too. For sure. I feel like that's kind of that muscle memory that I was talking about regarding intuition. We fall out of practice. We fall back into practice. All of it is a very human experience. I feel like, you know, the fool's journey starts off as a relatively chaotic one. And we often come back to that, right? So that restart, that jumping off again, leaping into something new, something you may not have even considered the first go around, right? So I feel like there's always like such an immense capacity to learn both about ourselves and about what the tarot means to us, how we choose to use it. I feel like there are so many different kind of uses that people engage with. There's really like answering specific questions, looking for a lot of guidance around a certain topic or situation in your life. And then there's also just the beautiful and gentle kind of daily check-in that offers us a bit of wisdom and maybe even a deeper connection with our intuition. Oh, I'm so excited to hear more from you. You know, you're, the way you speak about all of these things tells me that you're a lifelong learner yourself. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got here? Absolutely. I definitely feel like that page energy, right? That lifelong student uh, really applies to most of us, those of us that are open. Um, I feel like for me, my relationship with tarot started in my teens. I was a gothy kid. So taking, I remember taking the bus to like the mystical magical store <laughs> um, was kind of my first introduction to the world of tarot and magic and spells and crystals and kind of all of those things. Uh, that was my first sort of tangible experience with tarot. I feel like I was always a dreamer, like a kind of connected and wanting to be and desiring to be connected in nature, spending time there. I think that has such a deep uh, intrinsic connection to the tarot is our sort of natural evolution as people. Um, I ended up receiving a tarot deck from a friend when I was in my late teens. It was a tarot deck that I used and relied heavily on the guidebook with. <laughs> So I had this relationship where I read both for myself and just for friends and family for many years on and off, but definitely relied heavily on the spread that was in the guidebook, on the interpretations that were in it. It was a really non-traditional deck, so which I actually kind of love. So I then kind of, in about 2018, I had a reading with someone and it was really interesting because I, I was really attracted to the deck that was used and it was the first time I had purchased a, a second deck <laughs> so I had decades of just with one and then that kind of opened me up to the world and this is something we can talk about in classes too is just deck collecting as like part of the process right so now it's gotten <laughs> I've many more than one and two uh, which I just love. I feel like there are so many beautiful interpretations and it's like just collecting pieces of art for me. And also I find that using different decks at different times for different purposes really is meaningful. Uh, so yeah, that kind of took off from there in 2018. I did a lot of learning. I still do, like we talked about, that kind of perpetual student. I feel like I'm always there. So the both and of learning and teaching is really important. I took uh, some really deep dive classes and listened to a lot of podcasts. One of my main teachers was Lindsay Mack from Tarot for the Wild Soul. That was where I learned a lot about just kind of 
trusting myself. I felt really lucky that I hadn't done a real traditional class because I feel like some of the older paradigm meanings that are assigned to the tarot don't really align with modern times. And it would have been a lot of unlearning. <laughs> so I feel really blessed that I sort of stepped into it in a bit of an alternative space and didn't really have to unravel kind of the old to make space for the new. And now you give readings all over the place. You are clearly very tarot in tune, seeing between your tattoos and the tarot card behind you and everything else. Um, where can people find you out in the world? So I currently read in the Denver metro area at a number of lovely and unconventional places. That's one of my sort of favorite uh, parts of this kind of blossoming journey has just been finding some really lovely spaces to offer my gifts uh, that are not your run of the mill. So I read at a couple of different local bars. I read at the Denver Cat Cafe over on Tennyson, which is delightful. That was actually the first public place that I uh, began reading for strangers, people I don't know, as, as a professional uh, about four years ago. So they kind of gave me my start and I'm just so like delighted to be there. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. That's where I've let everything kind of unfold. I don't have a website. I haven't felt the need to kind of do those, again, conventional, things. So Instagram is going to be the best place to find like my local reading schedule. I post it at the top of each month. And that is at hermit underscore and underscore the underscore moon. <laughs> awesome. Hermit and the moon with all the underscores, you will yeah. be able to find Erin. And she's also one of our readers and healers on our ritual planner site. So if you like what you're hearing today, which who doesn't, one, you got to join the society because Aaron's going to be with us every second Sunday um, throughout the next three months, um, starting on July 9th. So you're definitely going to want to jump in, learn so much more from Aaron about tarot. But if you want a reading, hop over to the Ritual Planner site and book her as well. So we are so excited because Aaron's wealth of knowledge is going to be our wealth of knowledge now. And uh, it's just going to be such a lovely journey starting here in the summer. Aaron, anything else you want to add? I'm just really looking forward to connecting, to sharing, to learning, growing, kind of having a really beautiful exchange here in this space and community that y'all have built. And we could not be more excited for it. Thank you so much, Erin. We will see you on July 9th, if not sooner, over in the society. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you there. Thanks so much.